All right, we are live. Welcome, everyone, to the RSP Film Room, episode number 69. And this is going to be a fun episode. We're bringing Teron Davenport back from Football Game Plan. He was on last week. We had a great show watching Deronia Wilson. We're going to watch another wide receiver. This is a guy I've been excited about wanting to watch with Ron, and it is Michael Thomas, but not the Michael Thomas that you are thinking about if you're a college football fan, or at least a lot of you, probably thinking about the OSU Buckeye. But we're actually looking at the Southern Miss, is it Golden Eagles? The Southern Miss Golden, Eagles? Golden Eagles. Golden Eagles. We're going to see a Chicago native down, down south with the Golden Eagles today. Yes, sir. Absolutely. So Michael Thomas is a player that um, I got a chance to watch on Draft Breakdown last week for the first time. And as I was telling Teron, I had to watch him again. And then I had to watch him again. And then I had to watch him again because I just, I just wanted to make sure that the one game I saw wasn't an illusion. I felt like mm -hmm. that this guy is a pretty darn good football player who still has some things that he can get better at. But uh, we're going to see, we're going to watch, we might watch a couple games with him. And the first game that we're going to watch is one with him against Louisiana Tech. And we're going to see a couple of plays here <laughs> that uh, that I think that you'll look at this and understand why I'm, I, I've been joking around that maybe the OSU version, who is a pretty darn good wide receiver in his own right, might turn out to be the other Michael Thomas. Mm. If this guy turns out to play, turns out to progress at the rate that he that his promise, um, you know, flashes on film. So it's kind of a bold statement because I really I, I had a friend ask me this summer, Teron. He said, "So any wide receivers you should like recommend for me to watch um, at this point of the year?" And I said, "Michael Thomas at Ohio State." And then six months later, you know, last week, I, I wrote him and I said, I might have told you the wrong Michael Thomas. You need to watch this. <laughs> and and so we're going to we're going to get a chance to take a look at that ourselves right here. So if you're new to the RSP film room, um, we don't do all this talking and not showing any film. We're actually two guys watching some tape. We're going to comment on what we see on the position and on the player, talk about their draft prospects. And we do it within the scope as if we're assuming that what we're seeing is a definitive take on this guy. Um, we know that it isn't always the case. So we may say, you know, if everything we see checks out over the course of several games, this is where we see him, you know, we would project him as a player. Um, and, you know, it's just a, it's more of an educational experience for the both of us, for you listening out here, if you want to learn more about the game and the position and evaluation in general. So with that in mind, we'll read one disclaimer that just is to let you guys know that the videos posted here at the RSP film room are hosted, um, are not hosted on the server and the original video contents not considered to be the property of the RSP Film Room. Um, the videos are considered to be used under the Fair Use Doctrine of the United States Copyright Law, Title 17 U.S. Code, Sections 107 through 118, and the videos are used on this site for editorial and educational purposes only, and the RSP Film Room and its staff don't claim ownership of any of the original video content, and the RSP Film Room and the staff don't use these video clips in advertisements, marketing, or for direct financial gain. All the video content is of each clip is considered owned by the individual broadcast companies. We're commenting on cut-ups of games just for educational value and leave it at that. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and pull up the first one, Teron, and make sure we're good to go. Yes, sir. Let's do it. All right. All right. And... How's that looking to you? That's good. All right. Let's roll. Let's uh, get this volume off here. And I'm going to set it at half speed and get it rolling. Cool. All right. Thomas, as we see, number 88, 6'1", 200 pound guy, kind of the size of a, what, I guess Odell Beckham's kind of that size. Kind yeah, of, yeah, Odell Beckham type size. Not the same athleticism, but size for sure. And absolutely. what I like about this, right off the bat, you see an added dimension. Another yeah. thing that he brings to the table. 
Absolutely. And that's and that's what's going to get you. That's what you're going to get you an opportunity in the pros, especially if you come from a I wouldn't, don't want to call Southern Miss a lesser known school, but not a top tier college football program compared to what people right. think in the top 20. Um, and so if you can return kicks, you show the ability to, to to make plays. And what I like about this is, I mean, you do see some of the quickness here. He's very fluid. And he seems to be pretty comfortable running through tight space on a kick return. He's, you know, dipping more than he is stopping and cut and changing direction. He knows how to kind of change direction on the move and be a little fluid. Yeah, and, the, you know, the thing with kick return is it, you want to have the mixture of allowing your blocks to set up, but you also want to shoot right into that hole like you're, you're shot out of a cannon, you know, and that, that's what he did. I like the way he got a feel right away. Saw it a couple blocks. He slipped through the tight spot, as you said. And to me, it's just one of those things where you have the value of versatility. That's how I look at a guy like this, to where you could occupy a few roster spots, being as though you're, you're a kickoff returner. He has some part return ability and obviously the receiving ability that we're going to take a deeper look at. Yeah, and I love even just little fundamental things that are going to be important when you say, oh, well, he's fast, he can move, he, can, he has some running ability. But also, you got to think, well, what's going to happen in the NFL that's going to get him on the bench? Well, if he's carrying the ball kind of loose like this all the time, that would be a problem. But watch him in traffic. Mm -hmm. And you can see how he's keeping it high yeah. and tight. Yep. It's not too bad. He even takes a hit to that arm. So, I, you know, if he can continue to show that kind of high tight type of thing, that's that's going to give me even a little more confidence in him as a as a potential return man at some point. No doubt. Yeah, see, that, that's what I like about him. He he could catch the ball in traffic. You look right here, you know, he, he stems the route inside just a little bit to get inside the defender, and he sticks his foot in the ground and, and comes straight down the line. We talked about this last week with Deronnie Wilson, and, and if you look, there's no drifting. I mean, you can't see it too much, but you could tell that he didn't, he didn't drift too much, you no. know, and he caught the ball right there in traffic, expecting the hit. And he hung on to it. That, that's what you want. Yeah. I mean, and there's, and I mean, some of this you'll see over time, whether or not this is luck of the circumstance with this particular play, or he does have that feel to be able to kind of turn away. And this one, he gets hit. And I think the hit actually helps him stay away from the safety over top there. Mm -hmm. But yeah, but I mean, you talked about him being able to, you know, talked about the Runye being able to make his shoulders small and getting his body small and in a position to take a hit. And certainly you see Wilson do that on this particular play fairly, or Thomas do that fairly well on this play here. Right. And I love the number. I love the number 88. <laughs> that was my, I, I like that number myself, to be honest with you. <laughs> Yes, sir. I wore that once upon a time. See, there you go. At least he's trying. He kind of gets in the way there, but you got to give him a remark for effort. You know, he tried to find somebody to block. Yeah. And this is the type of play that if you're watching him – if we watch more of his games, we'll see more instances where he actually does get blocks in there. This one almost looks like he he uh, he avoided the block, but or you know it, it could look that way. So I you know this is the type of thing where I think when we comment on the effort, this one looked kind of funky, like he like he was avoiding it, or he expected. Or maybe he expected the runner to be further outside him and he could shield it because it was at this point that he dipped in and the runner was dipping out. I know at times in that type of situation, you're so cautious about not blocking in the back that you can't end up uh, whiffing, you know, 
because if you look here, the 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 uh, safety he kind of broke down, but you're not always sure he's going to break down. Like you don't know if he's going to come. You know the running back's coming behind you, so you don't know if he's going to uh, attack the running back on that inside shoulder right there. So yeah. it, it's you know I'm not making an excuse for the kid. He, he probably could have gotten a better block, but at the same time, being in that situation, I know what he's probably thinking. Like I don't want to. Uh, get a penalty to to, and uh, already have a good game, game. right? Yeah, and that makes sense. That totally makes sense from that standpoint, and it is worth knowing about. And you can see, you know, it, it, it it's almost like this particular play. You, it's kind of a, it's kind of one of those funny plays where you're trying to do the right thing, and it seems like each thing you end up doing doesn't quite work <laughs> out. <laughs> Because <laughs> now he wants to cut across to, to get number seven and doesn't realize he's about to, he ends up running into his own man. Yeah. <laughs> that happens, you know. You try to do the right thing and you stumble all over yourself, you know. We all, we all have those moments, so. Definitely. There you go. There you go. And even this, I mean, you know, you get to see a little bit of his release. You get a, a nice little jab step there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he runs him off, but that's a good way of kind of trial and error. Like you're, you're trying him to see how he's going to react to your moves, and you store that, and you bring it back later. Good note. Absolutely, because we're going to see what happens later on here too with this. Let that one go on to the next. All right, so we got him at the top of the screen, I believe, or do we not? Yeah, I believe that's him at the top. Oh, no, no, this is... I know that's him right there. Yeah. Yeah. Let's watch this one more time from the get-go. All right. Got him at the bottom. Got off coverage. A little outside shade there. I like the like the vertical part of the stem. A little bit of dip outside. Yeah. Just couldn't time it up. I wish we could see the top of that rock because I would like to see if he leans to that corner and sticks his foot in. That's that was one of my favorite things to do. And uh, you know, I was on, I was a four five five guy, so I wasn't running by too many DBs, but uh, just straight line. But when you're able to to use like a lean and and, and things like that in your routes, you can get open a lot easier. Yeah, I do think we see a little bit of a jab to the outside just before he comes out of the screen, right there. Okay, that last ex extended step. Yeah, oh, yeah, I see. What, yep. Ah, that one was so close. Yeah, yeah. And we're going to see some more interesting close calls, I believe, on this particular tape and some really good ones, I think, too. But, but yeah. That, I like his build, even. It, you know, he's he's got a nice lean build to him. He looks like a receiver. That's, I, I like that with him. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, kind of a he, – he's got that lith – lith wiry type of type of thing going on there and yeah just you know who, go, ahead. go ahead you go ahead you know who he looks like and i'm not i'm not making the comparison folks so i don't want you to you know kill the comments i'm not saying he's that player but when i look at him in pads and watch him run he, he reminds me of isaac bruce honestly that I actually, you know, what's funny is I've thought I've thought similar, especially after the catch, in some of these some of these plays, you see some of that. I I don't think there's anything wrong with comparing style, you know. Right. I mean, style right. and talent are different things, you know. I mean, it's like there are lots of there are lots of comedians out there in the style of Richard Pryor, but there's only one Richard Pryor, <laughs> you know. But you can but you can certainly see where the where that where the fruit fell from the tree you know right. and i think that i think that there's a there's some of that there with with thomas for sure so you know this particular play we see him at least get good position get he's his trying. Hand. yeah he's trying he's hugging but the efforts there and and that's the first thing you want to see right it, it, once you have the effort you could you could work on technique yeah. Is this him at the bottom here? Yeah. Wow. 
and bottom one more time yeah now this one I believe this one I think there's one coming up here that's that's a little bit harder to just teach I think I want to know if you think this is whether there's some teachable stuff here with some of the things that he does I'm sure there is but Yeah. You can't teach body control like that. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. He, he just earned the nickname Gumby. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm going to – have you seen this game yet? I saw bits and pieces. Uh, I, I, I didn't see this catch, though. Wow. Okay. Let's see that again. Okay. we're gonna. They're going to show this one again, I'm pretty sure. Let's see. Yeah, here we go. Hold on. Look at that. Yeah. And I don't think this is the best one. <laughs> it's the most successful one. The thing that stood out to look at the foot. Look, yeah. look. Yeah. He got that foot down. Just the the wherewithal to to know that he has to get that foot down and bounce. Now, obviously, next level he'll get the second one down. But to have the concentration to bring that ball in with one hand and get the foot down that's that's remarkable. That's not coachable. To no. Be honest with you. No. That's something that, I mean, you could work on making the one-hand catch. You know, you got Odell, Beckham, and Jarvis Landry. These guys work on that. But just to be able to get themselves in bound like that, that's that's incredible. Yeah. That's that's tremendous body control. That's really the bottom line. Because you see the DB trying to force him out. Yeah. And this is, like, to me, a good example of how – what I used to often – I often call things as integrated technique – this is an example of some of that integrated technique at a very high level of being able to take a technique of how to catch a ball one handed and then add in your athletic ability to it mm -hmm. and your awareness of where you are on the field. Yeah. You know, that's, that's something else, man. That's a, that's a major, oh, this would be a nice view to see. Yeah. And he might, you know, you wonder, does he snare that ball without having to juggle it down like that if he isn't pushed? You know, or, but I yeah. don't know. I like how he brought the other hand in to kind of secure it to his body, too. That's that's just that's just a, a good play, man. Not even a good, that's an excellent play. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so now where we got Tom? Now we have Thomas in the middle of the trips here. And nothing going there. Let's go to our next play. There we have him at the bottom of the screen. He brought that in? Yeah. Nice. And that's a, that's a good adjustment to the ball, you know. When, you, when you're expecting it, on your inside shoulder and you have to turn like that. That's not as easy as, as people may think, you know, because you're turning your body and in, in essence, your, your whole, like your, your viewpoint is changing. So as, as you turn your body, look at how he, he just maintains his focus on the ball and brings it in. I mean, that's, that's ball skills. And that's one thing that you see from this guy in every game that I've watched is, is that he attacks the football. And, yeah. and that 6-1 suddenly becomes the 6-4 that we saw last week because of how he attacks the football. Does he yeah. have any any track background or anything like that? Any high jumping or anything? Not the, I don't know. And that's worth wonder. That's worth looking into. I I also love that the way that he decides to jump. He you know, I mean again, he's looking back the way he needs to and I think it's all natural to flow where you jump the way you do, but to leap like this and completely turn away so that your back's to the defender like that, that's nice too. Yeah. So we'll probably get another close up of this in a minute here, I bet. Let's see. Yeah. So they'll show a little bit of a close up of the catch one more time. I like how he's got his hand just to kind of Frame that separation. Yep. That little soft push off. Yep. Secures the ball through the catch. 
It's a great play once yeah. again. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I believe there's one coming up, and this might be it, that I was watching this late at night, and I have – no, this wasn't it. Okay. This one's a little low. There's one that I'm, I watched late at night that I'll tell you about in a minute here when we see it. And another one. There we go. He shows the ability to to time his jumps really well. He tracks the football really well too. I mean, you look. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's just. And one of the things I see with him, I guess we haven't seen it just yet, but he kind of uses a rip move. I see this a lot where he kind of rips upward to get separation, and mm -hmm. not as much as some people. You a lot of most of the time I see receivers use chops. But right. I usually see him ripping upward, which is a move that I don't often see from a receiver at the college level. And he seems to lean on that one more, which is nice because he's going to learn the chop <laughs> if he doesn't already know how already. Yeah. yeah, the chop thing I like about the chop, you're using gravity. You know what I mean? You're coming down with gravity. And like we said last week, and when you constantly chop at a DB's uh, forearms and stuff like that, and they hate it. They yeah. hate it. And again, he's using the sideline fairly well here because as he's heading downfield, he doesn't hug the sideline on any of these mm -hmm. plays. He's yep. giving himself room to make this type of adjustment, to lean back and have all that cushion over here. Exactly. To get that horizontal separation instead of just the vertical. Yep, principles of, of being a vertical threat. You give yourself that cushion to fade to the sideline as you're fading to the ball. Okay. Oh my goodness. So I had this is the sh this is the play, and I froze it right here, and I said to myself as I was watching this after seeing the three catches we already saw that were like nice catches and one was an excellent catch, and I saw this and I said if he catches this ball I quit, I quit. <laughs> There's no way because this is this is Odell from that Giants game with the guy actually making contact right. in some regards in this particular situation. So we're going to get this. It just came out at the last moment. But for a minute there, I thought I was going to have an early retirement. <laughs> the strength he has to pull it out, one hand versus two hands. Yeah, and not till right here does the ball come out. We're going to see it from right. the other angle. I mean, he gets to the ground with this ball, I believe, if, I'm, if I remember it correctly in my excitement from watching it. Almost. Almost gets to yeah. the ground with it. That's something else. Yeah. I mean, that's a lean right there. In and it isn't just in free space. Like I mean, Odell's catch was unbelievable. But this isn't. This is Odell and with somebody hanging on. <laughs> right. It's contested. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And near, you know, nearly comes down with it. So that's yeah. That play. That play scared me when I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> And then just the fight, you know, we, he probably didn't even need to fight off that guy. Well, he probably would have gotten run. He probably would have gotten tackled, but, but you see some, you know, you, you see a, and he, uh, just a good knowledge of angles here. Mm -hmm. I mean, he slips this and look where he work. He works his hand 
repeatedly to find the spot where he can push the defender away. And he finally finds the back of the shoulder. It's not just, let me stick it out. Oh, I didn't get the, the stiff arm I wanted. It's more like, let me find, I, okay. <laughs> get off me. Yeah. yeah. And he's still fighting. Yeah. I like the route too. You know, the yeah. crossing pattern, the dig that he ran is, is definitely, well, it's more like a post, but either way, you know, seeing him, he, he's pushing up field. Didn't really need to get a move because he's already inside the defender. Natural hands catch. Yeah. And even though it's slow motion, you can see that he plays at a fast pace. Mm -hmm. He's quick. The motion is very steady. Yeah, it's it's just a... Let's see if we can, we'll probably see it from this angle as well, coming across. Oh, they're going to, yeah. It's all very smooth. And he's placing that stiff arm in good spots. I mean, he's making heads go back or people fall down. So he's, right. got, a good, he's got a good hand-eye coordinate. And you'd expect that, a guy with great hand-eye coordination, to probably be able to know where to put his hands, just like a boxer. <laughs> Yeah. That's him up top, right? Yeah. And I don't think and he just run he runs off the man, but then also gets to turn around and shield a little bit too. Mm-hmm. Play official. Yeah. And a rare drop. But figures out a way to catch it anyway. <laughs> Back shoulder throw and Back man, shoulder that's... throw with a kick. Yeah. That's not easy, man. No. You drop that ball like that, you're just kinda like you kinda panic. Then it's back up, you kick it in the air like that's Yeah. I yeah. mean it's I, I, I can't believe he meant to kick it, but the fact that he was able to still get it pretty nice. Yeah. It's a perfect, it's kind of funny. It's actually perfect placement on his foot, the way that it, if, if it was going to happen to be a mean to, but I'd find that hard to, hard to yeah, believe. That's, that's Bruce Lee <laughs> level right there, man. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So we've got a choice. We could, we could watch the Washington game. Um, that is the recent bowl game. He had a huge effort in that game. We see a little bit more run after the catch with him and some more blocking with him. We also see a higher level of competition against Nebraska, where we also see some nice plays, but we also see him against probably – I know Washington supposedly has some pretty good corners, um, but I also know that we know that the Nebraska game is that level of football that – you know, tends to be as a school tends to have a pretty high level of football. Right. So you got a, you got either one you want to watch. Either one's fine with me. Okay. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna flip a coin. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Actually, choose one or two for me. What's that? Choose one or two. What? What? Pick a number. One or two. Two. I'll go with. Okay. Me too. So we're gonna go Nebraska since I have it up here. Okay. All right, let's get this rolling. All right. You know what I like about that? What's that? Obviously, the hands catch, but look at how when he catches it. All right, so he makes the catch, looks it into the tuck, and turns right upfield. Now, a lot of people right there, if you just bring it back just a little bit. So right there before he crosses the 50, when he's at right about the 49, there's a lot of college receivers that are just run out of bounds right there. But he's able to see right there, but he's able to stay in bounds. 
Now, obviously, he gets pushed out a little bit later, but you know he's able to stay in bounds and get some extra yards. That's that's uh that's a really good play by him. You know, yeah. and it's showing good sideline awareness. It's a very nice subtlety. I'm going to share another nice subtlety that I like about this play too. Watch his leap. It's not a very big one. Mm-hmm. He knows. You know, we saw all these grandiose skying for the ball in the last game where it's like he had to make those plays. But when the ball's just high enough that all he has to do is make a little hop, yep. he's going to do that too. So he's not doing the let me leave my feet as much as, as high as I can on every throw that I see that's a little high. He tracks the ball well enough to adjust, to make the appropriate adjustment so that the leap's not so high so that the leap is just enough so that he can make this turn. Yeah, and he doesn't lose speed. Yeah. And that's the, you know, you see that a lot. We see a lot of impressive athletes who will, who leave their, the first drop of a hat, they're like, oh, the ball's high, and they jump really high, and they end up getting hit, or they can't get stay on the ground and keep their feet on the ground. Yeah, Will Fuller is one of my favorite receivers, but he's guilty of that all the time, you know. Yeah, and it's something they learn, you know, but I love the point you made, getting up field like that. And he tucks the ball fast, too, mm-hmm. which is another nice thing because we do see a lot of young receivers who I it almost looks like they're playing option quarterback the minute they catch the ball, and it takes them like two or three steps to tuck the ball in rather than to hold it with two hands at their chest. Yeah. All right, so we have we have a couple things here. We got a nice flat break on this on this play. Yeah, that's, yeah. the the receiver there, eight eighty three, kind of missed his block on there. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a tough one. We used yeah. to run that. It was called ha- hammer routes. We used to run. Hammer routes. Yep. Nice. I've never heard that term. I've heard smash screen where they mm-hmm. come back a little more, but I, I like the hammer route. I like that. And, you know, that's it's a good play by the defender. You know, you'd like to see him catch it, but that's a tough catch. Yeah. And it's one of those ones where, you know what, even if he caught it, it didn't really matter. I mean, it's, it's a loss of yards. You know, you lose a yard with the catch anyway. Yeah, yeah. So basically, at this point, the one drop we've seen in in a game and a game and a half at this stage of the game is has been that play. Let's see here. You would like to see him avoid the contact a little bit, but, I mean, he still gets where he has to go. Yeah. And he still makes the play after contact. Yeah. That's where that chop could come in, you know, as the DBs, as he puts his hands out, you could chop him down. But, uh, Still, he's he's able to get inside where he needs to go. Yeah, and when we see, and eventually, what we'll want to see is him use that inside arm, right, to slap down or hold the forearm and chop over top. Yep. With the with the outside arm, so re- certainly room to improve. And with his quickness and the willingness to play in traffic, like he has, you know, learning some of these release moves are really going to be helpful to him down the line, especially with his quickness. Yeah, there's a lot to work with uh, when you're looking at this guy. And the thing I like about him is he shows that he could play either side and he could also play slot. So I I like that, man. He's equally as dangerous at at, at the slot as he is outside. Uh, Yeah, that's a great point. Trying to get that positioning. Yeah. (laughs) 
looked like he misjudged it a little bit, but I mean, that's going to happen. Yep. His momentum, I mean, everything's carrying him upfield. You can't just stop on a dime in, in that type of situation. So. And he got a, he got pushed a little bit. Like, we'll watch right. Actually, I'm a little too far in. Okay, right there. Little, yeah, the little punch with the the right hand. And he might have acted it up a little bit, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> He's lobbying for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One on one. Yep. And there's a little bit of a brush off there. Let's see what we got up top. Good separation. He closed on that one. I was looking at the shadow of the ball and I was I didn't think that he was gonna make that catch. No. That's a good catch. And, and the he, thing Go ahead. You 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 first. Go ahead. Coaching point on this one that, that I, I see a lot of young receivers do is when the ball's in the air like that, they're running with their arms extended. But if you see what he does here, he puts his arm out at just the last minute. You know, you see him still, his arms are tucked to the side and he's pumping to not lose speed. And I think that's what allows him to, to catch up to the ball that I thought was going to be an overthrow. Because you look where the shadow is, and it looks like it's it's gonna it's gonna be out, out of reach for him, but he's able to to show the speed and technique to to track that ball down. Yeah, because right here it looks. Yeah, the late hands is is a very nice thing. You don't want to give that tell to the defender, and, and you don't and he doesn't know where the defender is exactly. He knows he's at his back, but he doesn't know whether it's a yard, whether it's a foot. Mm -hmm. And that's another catch that's not easy to make when that over the shoulder like that, where you're leaning back a little bit too. That's that's not a not an easy catch, man. He's no. he's <laughs> it, this guy is nice, man. He's he's gonna be a gem for somebody. I don't think he's gonna go high, you know, no. but he's gonna be one of those picks like a Tyler Lockett type that you know, or Stephon Diggs, a lower a or lower Alan pick. Hearns. Alan Hearns, excellent. <laughs> Excellent comparison, uh, just as far as like you know, coming out of nowhere and and playing so well. Yeah, and you and here's the other thing is you mentioned where the sun's shining. He's looking back into the sun. Mm-hmm. And making that catch, that's that's solid. And he ain't going down right away either. Now, I mean, I know this is a lot of momentum based because you're being very. He's gained a lot of speed here. He ran right through 14. Yeah. And 14 doesn't look like a small fry. That's a corner. <laughs> right. Just as big, every bit of six, six one. Yeah, that's a man trying to tackle him right there. If he can catch him, he's just trying to hold on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's definitely more exciting than Deronye, you know, watching him uh, last week. But I, I just he, – he's one of those guys that, that you know, I, I like what he brings to the table. He's more electric, you know, and, and he's somebody that makes those big momentum plays. You know what I mean? Absolutely. But Deronye, Deronye as you astutely pointed out, is uh, was a fine watch for us to have because you get to see where a player could go with his – with his physical skill sets and with what he already knows. And he's mm -hmm. a very intriguing watch and a very important watch because he could turn out to become an asset at, in a starting lineup as that kind of big possession guy who can make big plays as well. Without a doubt. So, yeah, I mean, this is, these are more the highlight splash plays that are fun to watch for sure. I'm, I'm right there with you, but uh, you know, you watch a guy like there's guys you watch and you, and you get excited about. And I, I probably get about four to five of those players every year. And this, this is probably the first one of the year for me is, is the guy that I'm just like, Oh, I want to share him with everybody. Every time I see, every time I see him on the field, you see that right there. He wins the route right there. 
Yep. Actually, not even right there, right before the 50. Because they're they're squared up. That little that little jab step outside to get inside. Yep, he moved. Yeah. Got him moving to the outside right there. That See, that? See the little shift? Yep. Once you what happened, with, what happened with that hop right there? What 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 if I'm even? I'm, I'm leaving. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And when you get a man to commit that hard that he's gonna that he's gonna leave his feet to commit, mm -hmm. that's it. And then he brings the arm over. And that's a little chop there. Yeah. He's and got he's, it there. Yeah. And he squeezes between he squeezes inside that man. Doesn't get run yeah. off course. Oh, and that's timing. Too. timing. Yeah. I mean, back to the football. Those are the type of things. Yeah, if those are the type of things that makes your quarterback trust you also. You know, <laughs> if, if that quarterback didn't trust him, he wouldn't put the ball there. Because I believe, let me see. Yeah, there was a safety in there. So you have to really trust your, your receiver to go up and make the play because you had that safety closing in. And, uh, you, you know, he's he's also not covered, but, you, you know, it's a contested catch, so to speak. But he yeah. comes back and use that leaping ability and timing. And this is something that you really like from a receiver. And once again, this is the stuff that makes him a 6'4", not a 6'1", type of guy. Yeah, and it's also the thing you can put on your resume that coaches are going to look at and go, His, they are this much in sync this quarterback and receiver that the quarterback reads the safety in the corner and says, I'm going to throw it anyway, because I know where to put it. And I know he's going to be there to catch it. And a quarterback who's thinking, who are some receivers that I would like in this draft who I think that are going to show me something that I know I can work with and develop a rapport with and do some things like this and adjust on the fly. Seeing a play like this, gives you that bullet point to say there's potential here that I can have a guy that I go, you know, when the safety's here, expect it at your back shoulder, you know, expect yeah. it here or expect, you know, we're, and, and if he's fortunate enough to play with a decent enough quarterback who doesn't get benched, they don't have, he ends up on a team where he's, they're not like churning through quarterbacks every two and a half years. He could end up on a team where they have this time of connection and just how smooth, I mean, look, he's going from, He's going from potentially stacking this defender right here. I mean, he's like a step away from being able to stack him and keep going downfield to mm -hmm. reading the play and turning right around and just reversing it to where now he's shielding him and has the ball. And that's coming back to the football, that timing, man. That's that's uh, another great play by this guy. Yeah. Just smooth. And it's, you know, and it's not, you know, no offense to Louisiana Tech. There's some good football players, you know, at Louisiana Tech. But you're also, you know, if you're someone that is watching this and you're not familiar with that and, and your, only, your only takes are, well, are they in the Big Ten or the SEC? Well, here's Big Ten for you. Right. And this isn't the only good Southern Miss wide receiver. <laughs> there is another young man by the name of Daniel Braverman who's pretty darn good in his own right from the slot. Right. He has that's the one with all the catches, right? Yeah. I watched him the other night against Toledo. Oh. See that? Yeah. Not bad coming out his break, but his head is – and that's the thing. On these type of routes, you have to be able to get your head around it, see how quickly he gets it around, locates the football, and that's what allows him to, to find it and go up and get it like that. Yeah, and it's close. He doesn't get it, but he makes it – he almost does. Oh, he didn't get it. Okay. No, it went. it's hard to see probably at this level, but it went right through his hands right here. Mm. The ball's actually where I'm circling it. It actually went through. Oh, okay. I got you. Yeah. So, but it's it's pretty close. And he and you can see what he was thinking because when he completes the action, he does have one foot down. Yeah. Yeah. Right there. I got you. 
Yeah. That thing was thrown pretty hard, too, because look at how far <laughs> it carried on out of bounds. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the passes he's dropped weren't cupcakes. Right. One he had about one of them he had probably about 240, 250 pounds of beef coming at him. And this one was a a high and you know high and hard throw. Mm -mm -mm. So not every drop, not every drop is is counts the same. Definitely true. That's why that's why that drop we saw that earlier that I was saying if he caught it I quit is still that to me why I got so excited you know that the, probably the most exciting thing I saw of him was the drop even though all this other stuff was so good and are more important to the evaluation the, the most exciting thing to me was actually this that drop we saw I guess <laughs> yeah that was definitely a good effort you know yeah hmm. so okay so we got this here it's like one of those fade stops kind of speak. Let's see. Let's see from the beginning here. Gets his arm under. Low contact there. Yeah. And makes makes sure to get the get the backs the back arm into the chest so he can get the other arm free. Comes back to the ball. I mean, coming back to the football, that's something that, that you want in that situation. I, I, I wonder, I, I know you don't want to give your route away by your split, but in, in that one, he's literally outside the numbers, short side of the field. You might want to line up a little further inside. I mean, that's nitpicking, but uh, – but no. it's a good it's a good point, and it's something he's going to have to learn, right? I mean, and is that a is that a choice thing? Would that be a case for knowing that this is the route he's running? Would he have that choice to be able to make his split a little bit narrower? Right. That's that's the question. You know, is he allowed to narrow his split? Because some of these coaches, and it looks like they're very clear on on uh, you know making a point on the spacing. You see it up top and everything. So it, that coach may very well want him to line up right there. And if that's the case, yeah, if that's the case, you go, well, he may do on the fact that he's dealing with a more physical corner who's got his hands on him and still able to use one arm to kind of at least push off a little bit. It does take him, it does knock him off his stem some, but then he adjusts and becomes the aggressor himself. And that's the trust again with the quarterback. Yeah. And that's, and part of it too, to me is like when I watch these plays, these are the in between the lines type of things that I like about evaluation. That's so much fun. As you go, all right. The rule is the split could have been better, could have been more optimal for him if he's allowed to. The technique might not be as great as it needed to be, or he's a little, or he's you know he's overpowered here on this particular section, but he finds a way. Mm -hmm. You know, even with all of those, even with those things right there. He still finds a way, and that's a consistent theme, it seems like, with this player, is that he finds a way to make a play. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Motion. Yeah. A little behind him. Yeah. That's a tough catch to make. Yeah. One of the best catches I've seen in the past couple of weeks of spending a lot of time watching watching tape after tape was of a tight end at Iowa, Henry um, Krieger Koob, um, Koble, I think that's how you pronounce his name. And he mm -hmm. made a catch like this that I was, you know, he's not, he's not going to make amazing catches that, you know, Aaron Hernandez once did or Rob Gronkowski could do or even, you know, um, Jordan Reed can make, but he makes some underrated catches like that. And when you can catch going against your momentum low and yeah. behind you. Yeah, that's definitely doing something. Yeah. So 
So I think he's up top. Let's see. Either he's up. We'll see. Maybe not. Nope. There he yes, is. Sir. Yeah. Uh, he fought it a little bit. Yeah. Did that get tipped? That's, That's the question. Good. I watched this play a couple of times and we're going to see it again. I don't I think I came away with saying it didn't get tipped, but let's take a let's take a quick look. It was enough that he certainly got distracted. Right. I looked the safety off just a little bit. He may very well have expected it to get tipped. I mean, it hit his hand, so obviously, as a receiver, you're going to say, hey, I should have caught it. But yeah. I, it looked like he was expecting it to, to be tipped. I think the ball just came – if it did, it was very close. And yeah, I don't, think, I don't think they got it. I don't think so either. I think the hand flashed across his line of sight. And the way that he was turned, it wasn't completely facing the ball, and the, the ball only hits one of his two hands, I think. Yeah. But it yeah. looked like it hit that, that uh, the right hand. And then, you know, you got that right there coming down. That's, that's even if – man, that's a tough catch to make. Even if he was able to, to hang on to it, you know, you got that safety coming and ready to peel your cap. Yeah. And I don't care what anybody says. You see that. <laughs> you see that statement coming. <laughs> Listen, I I didn't play wide receiver. I didn't play organized football. I played a lot of wide receiver when I didn't play organized football. And the, my proudest catch is getting flipped oh, for a ball and getting flipped and landing on my back. And I do remember <laughs> that guy coming <laughs> yeah. and thinking this might be the stupidest thing I've ever done in my life. Like it just flashed across my face was you know, in my, across my mind as I was holding onto the football thinking, I hope I get up from this because <laughs> this might be really stupid. I was 16. All right. So I just wish I was 16 again. I'd probably do it again, but yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so there we have it. We have Mr. Michael Thomas. Yeah. And this is exactly why he's a legit sleeper, man. And I hope more people get to, uh, well, I hope that people watch more of him after this, this uh, breakdown that we did, because he's fun to watch. And he's fundamentally sound. He's exciting. You know, he gives you everything that you want from a receiver. I didn't see as much yards after catch, but he still shows that ability. I mean, they wouldn't have him on punt return if he didn't have the – or kickoff return if he didn't have the ability to do something with the ball when he gets it. Yeah, and, there, and if you want to see some of that, I'd recommend the Washington game. I watched that one, and it just came up on draft breakdown. I watched it last week before it came up there. But they picked a good one because there's some yak that you get okay. to see from him there. So I would definitely recommend that one. Um, and I agree with you. It's a he's definitely one of those guys you got to keep an eye on. Um, and I would, you know, it was funny. I watched this and I'll give a shout out on Twitter to if you're watching this. I believe the name is Bill Jones, and then there's a guy by the name of Bump and Run Coverage who, who had, by the two Twitter names that are on there, who I mentioned Michael Thomas late at night as I was watching it and they were both on and they were like, Oh yeah, well the, he's good. But the question is, is do you, you know, which Michael Thomas now are you, you know, really hyped about after watching this, you know, and, and they, and they were talking about the, you know, talking about that. And I said, well, I'm not in that club yet. I said, but I might be knocking on your door for a membership form. So, so um, I, you know, those two guys have been definitely been talking about them on Twitter for a while. It sounds like, um, and it was fun to get a chance to uh, to see them and, and have the excitement about that player. So, I, I you know, I'm, I'm still a big fan of the Ohio State guy. No, uh, definitely no disrespect to him and his game and the fans who like watching him. But 
I, I would definitely, I'm definitely with you. I think this is a guy who's going to be a really nice value for for a team. Um, and he may, you know, whether he gets drafted, you know, fourth, fifth round, third round, not drafted at all. Uh, you know, these things may depend on injury history. They may depend on what, on interviews and character. We don't know, you know, I don't know his story. I just mm -hmm. know he's from Chicago. I know he plays for Southern Miss. And I know I like a lot of what I see from him. Right. Yeah. Now, he'll be in the camp somewhere. And, and those type of plays that we saw today, that's going to draw the attention of, of the coaching staff. And that, that type of effort is going to that, get him a spot on a roster. Yeah. So I hope you guys enjoyed this as much as we did. And once again, for Teron Davenport, a football game plan, definitely go check out his work. And you can follow him on Twitter at Teron. Is it underscore or that under? Yeah, yeah. Huh? It's T Davenport underscore. NFL. All right. You got it. T Davenport underscore NFL. And I'm Matt Waldman. Happy New Year, everyone.